assimilation process and to give the support systems once you get back in the system, get back in the community and you be, um, you're back into your home, back into your community, back into your school. We want to be that support system to help them to be able to adjust and to know that they have a, a support network. Right. That's an excellent point, Bishop. We, uh, reintegration is a vital part of that symmetry. Having making sure that in the communities, as I referred to earlier, the proper wraparound services, be it drug and alcohol counseling. A large number of our kids are in in in, in, in our care because of drug or uh, drug charges. Not necessarily, you know. I mean, some of them are addicted. Some of them have been dealing. But we're putting, you know, best models of practice in place to help to get them the counseling that they need and back on track. And again, with partnerships with the communities. It will work the best. And, uh, have you tried to hire him away from his dad yet? Yeah, uh, well, he's... he's, 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 he's that sound, okay. <laughs> sound like the kind of person we need to have on the team. Over there. But that's, these are the kinds of... Um, but it, it works best. The faith and the governor, this has the governor's personal attention. He wants the churches. He wants us to work with the faith community to help make this happen. So. Well, allow me to chime in if you don't mind. Sure. Um, I've spent most of my career in a local church setting in Little Rock, Arkansas, um, at the invitation of the Pleasant Valley Church of Christ on Rodney Para. have spent two different stints there, a total of about 10 plus years. I've come to a place, though, where we're convicted, while it is true that the church is the most untapped resource that exists, there are 600 of churches in the city. What the reality is, is an incredible amount of inertia exists in all of our churches to be inward focused. Mm -hmm. And what we want to do is to be a catalyst to all of the churches in the city to heighten their awareness of opportunities to serve in the city and get connected. And so it's our goal to really be that external force to come alongside of the churches and to affirm what it is that they're doing, but to make them aware and mindful of the opportunities that they as a church can have to be more engaged. And guys, simply put, many of our churches are very clueless mm -hmm. as to the reality of what's happening city and what it's going to take is a constant drumbeat and it's going to have to come not from a church programming for this but it's going to have to be the members of the church just like your son who stand before the church boldly and say here is what I have found is an opportunity for me to take my God-given gifts and serve in the city and proclaim that to the church and as a member of the church and let that be said in such a way that other members number one are inspired by that they recognize I've got to get off my duff and finally get out there in the city and serve in, instead of being so incredibly selfish. And when that begins to happen in all of our churches across the city, where that drumbeat week after week after week of the people in the church talking about their particular interest in a variety of areas. Not everybody's going to have the passion for the work that he's talking about, but there's going to be somebody out there interested in foster care or the needs of special needs children or recovery ministry, or homelessness, or whatever. All of which comes under our department. All of which is there. And, and, uh, and so we're simply saying we want to be that agent, if you will, out there communicating with the churches and truly be talking about a coalition being formed. The reality, and I've been for six months meeting in meetings, day after day after day. Guys, a lot of people's concept of what it is to form a coalition is a false coalition. When we come to the table and talk about what it really means to be united and form a coalition, we've got to be able to come with full disclosure and recognize we've got to take away our own selfish interest. And what's needed often is a true third party that's able to come and really form this kind of coalition, recognizing that their agenda is not their own, but that they really want to work with everyone and let's all recognize the contribution that we can make. Each of us brings something to the table. There's a leadership role that we can play. And there is room for everybody to do what they can instead of being so turf-oriented. So, are your organizations related in Actually, any way? City just, Connections, just, Community Connections, we just met today for the first time. Is that time, right? So no. I mean, I just saw the name, yeah. the, the, the comment, the nominating name. she has a name. specific okay. niche in a very important yeah. area. And I sound like we'll, I want to talk more with you mm -hmm. about what you all do as well. Um, and I, I don't want to take up too much time and I'm going to have to leave but I know the senator may have some things that he want to add to this um, we don't we, we see this as a need we're still
there, we're in the beginning steps of figuring out the best way to do it, the most effective way to do it, so that we can get the results that we want for the children that we serve. Um, it needs to be a coordinated effort with the churches. We don't want to just, you know, find money and just, just throw it out there. The state doesn't have those kind of resources. We want to get the most return for that investment in our children that we possibly can. So, uh, you know, having you know the, the right consultants to work with us to put models of practice uh, together is what's going to help to help for this to work well. We've got expertise on staff to, to drive it. Um, so it's it's a serious endeavor that we're we're taking. It. And Steve probably knows a little bit more about. It. He does it all day, every day, and they update me on what's going on. And I get to say what I like about what they're doing, and, and I like it all. And so I just I think that this is a worthwhile meeting that whoever called this together, because it's broader. We need people at your level in the churches, That's right. at your level. So because you talk to, you have a broader uh, net. That you can cast. No question. So when we get people like you in the room who say, "Yes, I like what my brilliant son is working on here, and I want to bring our church to the table," we can get some things done. Um, so I'm I'm in. Well, I, I'm ready to talk about the next step, Senator. I don't know if you want to retire or something. Or, uh, but Senator I think there's some other people that need right. to hear because we want to get all of the. You know, Before Senator Steele, Senator Steele makes his comment, I want to introduce Reverend Norfolk. This is Reverend Willie Norfolk from High Bluff. That's a professor. And he, he will be. He will be. We're going to work on that this time. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the um, great Reverend Norfolk. Um, he's also the chair of the school board at Pine Bluff. Yeah, he's one of Pine Bluff's so, uh, so I had met him about four or five years ago. Right. right. He's a friend. So right. So, so I want to introduce him before we uh, uh, the Senator Steele speaks to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just glad to be here and to see this type of uh, effort and What's your home church? St. Mark. St. Mark, yeah. Little old church on the hill. Little church on the hill. You know, I'm, I, I'm in. I just uh, could just echo what uh, Representative Jones has, has, has indicated. I, you know, I would just say that I, I think any effort that goes forward should be targeted. And sometimes that's the toughest thing to do because target something, you, you, you have a destination you're trying to get to, but you also leave some folk out, uh, and that's a tough thing to do when so many need help, uh, so many people, so many kids, so many areas, everybody needs help, but in order to be successful, I think you need to target, and whether that's a geographic target, whether that's a uh, specific age group target. I mean, those are things that, that, that need to be worked out. But I, I think the more targeted it can be at, at the beginning, um, uh, I, I think it is, the time could not be better. Now, I think there have been many efforts uh, in, that are individually successful, um, but I've not seen an effort that bring a cross-section of groups to the table going to make a commitment to work together. Let me tell you one, one old statement that you know I hear a lot and a lot of the responsibility is put on the church. Well, the church is where, where all the people are. <coughs> the church is where all the people are on Sunday. That's right. Mm -hmm. Tuesday through Saturday, churches are very small. Church is going to need a lot of help and the expertise, but it's the same people who make up the church who are the taxpayers for your job, your program, all the state revenues that come in. These are those same individuals. So instead of saying the church should do more, we need to look at well, who's the church and who's responsible? We are really responsible because the church is putting the bill. Am I making any sense? It's to me. Uh, 
those are the folks who are paying the taxes. So we have a responsibility to use those individuals uh, uh, with your organizations, uh, in your office, Representative Steve, in your office, to help them with the design of what will work. Instead of having a design out here that then is submitted over here, and then someone over here who thinks they're in charge and does not really know what uh, servient leadership is really all about, says, this won't work. Well, if you were involved in the design, you wouldn't have been in the meeting <laughs> and not said anything once it got to that point. So I think the philosophy of whatever we do needs to change. And those individuals who could possibly be funding resources, who could possibly be people who are going to help from a consulting standpoint, need to be there to help the church from day one. Then we will not have issues when we get down the road, when we start thinking about things as funding, uh, launching a, a, an effort or an initiative. I just think too often, instead of saying, said Max said, they need to do something. It needs to be, we need, it's our responsibility to help them put it together, implement it, and then make sure it works. You know, this is one of our organization's goal is, like you mentioned, pull everybody together. And it's, I want to combine that with what Steve was talking about, because every meeting we've had, our goal is to pull everybody together. We understand it's a daunting task, but... It's, it's prevention. It's not wait until the kids are already in detention facilities or wait until they're after, but it's prevention. It is going to the detention facilities and meeting with those kids that don't, that don't have family members come. Those 50 or 60 kids every Tuesday or Thursday or whatever you said it was, Steve, it was having mentors go there. It's, it's having mentors meet with the kids once they come out. And it's having mentors meet with family members of, for preventative measures for children that are in detention centers, and then for children that are they're released, once they are released. But we do have a specific area that we're, we're starting with. It's Ward 2 and Ward 3 in North Little Rock. But our ultimate goal is to branch it out to the entire state. Um, um, you're, you're with, are you with a uh, no, separate, whole separate entity? Okay. Yeah. Our, what our organization is wanting to do is, is not just work with, uh, with the churches, but to bring churches civic organizations, uh, business owners, um, you know, people that live in these specific areas. Neighborhood groups. Neighborhood groups. You know, everybody that has a vested interest. Tell me the name again of your group. It's Life Skills United. Life Skills United. Yes. Okay. And it's a, it's, a, it's a basically a non-profit mentoring group that's going to pull all of these organizations together. Focused on this very specific niche need. Wards two and three are uh, Levy, uh, 